Coming up next on Channel 11, the Yankees and the Tigers. The date, July 4th, 1939, in Yankee Stadium is the focus of the baseball world as a city, a sport, and a nation turn out to pay tribute to one of baseball's greatest warriors. It was Lou Gehrig Day, and they were all there, from the fans to the mayor to the 27 Yankee teammates. It may be half a century later, but the words of the Iron Horse still echo through the rafters of Yankee Stadium. It was the day Lou Gehrig said goodbye. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Yankees Baseball Network, WPIX presents the 1989 New York Yankees. Thank you very much, Mel Allen. Live on the New York Yankee Baseball Network, WPIX Sports presents the New York Yankees and the Detroit Tigers on this 4th of July from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, New York. Hi, hello, and welcome to Yankee Stadium, everybody, and happy holiday to all of you on this 4th of July. As you can tell, this is a very special day for all of us here with the Yankees and for all of us that are a part of baseball because this is the 50th anniversary of Lou Gehrig Day at Yankee Stadium. It was July the 4th of 1939. Along with the Scooter, Phil Rizzuto, and Tom Seaver, I'm George Grant. And Scooter, this is a day where there's a lot of nostalgia, a lot of memories here at the stadium. Ah, uh, there's uh, really, I tell you, it's like people speaking to you from the upper deck and the loge and uh, down below and voices of uh, Lou Gehrig, Babe Ruth, and uh, Joe McCarthy and all the great Yankees. But first, I think we ought to tell the folks why we are attired in these beautiful jackets and hats. They are replicas of the warm-up jackets and hats that the Yankees wore in the 20s and 30s. I tell you, they are unbelievable. I'm, and, and the beauty part of it is that we get to keep these when we go home. <laughs> but I think even the women would be surprised to see how they're... They are beautiful. I think There's it's a me. lining. There's I'm a not lining. sure. It's, but, they're pretty sharp in any of But they are beautiful. But you're right, George. This, it's a sad day, and 50 years ago today, a day that uh, I don't think there was a dry eye in the house after that speech or during that speech by Lou Gehrig. And when we start talking about his records, which we'll do later on, it, it re not only chokes up, but it, you realize what a great athlete he was that batted in back of Babe Ruth and collect the runs batted in and run score that he did. Tom Seaver, I know that we look at the plaque of Lou Gehrig out in center field, and we've been here before and had an opportunity to see the memories and to feel what Lou Gehrig meant to this franchise he means something to all the baseball doesn't well, it? it's you know he, he, he transcends the New York Yankees you know he is what uh, one of the legends of baseball all of baseball it makes no difference whether uh, the fact that he did play for the New York Yankees the speech that he gave here at the stadium on that very special day 50 years ago one of the highlights of baseball history another thing about Lou Gehrig about every young ball player that comes to this ballpark, every future major leaguer, every kid that has come off the sand lots, when they would walk in here, they would want to see the plaques and the and the monuments in center field of Yankee Stadium, Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. It is one of the highlights of any young player that has ever wished and had the good fortune to play this game in Yankee Stadium. One of the first things you do is go out and look at those monuments. I know when I came here in one of the exhibition games between the Mets and the Yankees, the first thing I did, and this is after I've already played in the big leagues maybe three or four years, went right out to those monuments and looked at Ruth and looked at Gehrig and looked at all the history. And, the, and it's just, it gives you chills thinking about it because it is such an integral part of, of history of not just the New York Yankees but our entire country. Those of you that aren't familiar, if you do come out to the stadium, you haven't been out for a while, that is now called Monument Park, and there is access from the stands to Monument Park. So come out to the ballpark a little bit early the next time you come to Yankee Stadium and bask in the history and the tradition of the Yankees. Out there, you can see the monuments and the great tradition that the Yankees certainly are very much a part of. And Scooter, you have a unique perspective of all of this because, yes, you're a great Yankee, but you're also a teammate of Mr. Gary. Well, not actually a teammate. I didn't get to play with Lou. Right. I was in the minor leagues with Kansas City at the time. I got to play against him. And, uh, I mean, it was just a thrill uh, watching him come to bat. He and uh, DiMaggio and all those great ball players. Ruth was through playing them, but it was just a thrill having been associated with him that little bit. 
We go now to the field where, as we look out at the resplendent stadium field today, Robert Merrill is about ready to sing our national anthem. And there is no greater moment in baseball than on a 4th of July than to listen to this man sing our national anthem from Yankee Stadium. By the dawn shall he lie, what so proudly we hail, at the twilight light blue stars, whose broad stars and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched was so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, sailors, that star-spangled banner yet we Oh, the land of the free and the home of the brave. Well, there's Robert Merrill, who always brings a lot of nostalgia and a great voice here to Yankee Stadium and has sung the national anthem for so many years and right now throwing out the first ball will be Larry Rand who is the chairman of the ALS Foundation Good place to throw it right over to first base. Not to home, but over to first. There's a special day here at the stadium. Very, very apropos, Tom Savis. See, a lot of people don't tie that in with Garrick being the great first baseman he was and Mattingly trying to follow in his uh, footsteps. It's funny how pitchers think of certain things and infielders and outfielders and catchers think of another you cracked me up with that line you said was there any pitcher didn't want to pitch for those Yankees in that <laughs> era I mean with the well, runs they scored well we were talking about down before when we were looking at the tape scooter that was a ball club the 1927 Yankees that scored 900 listen to this 975 runs they oh. scored in 154 games that's <laughs> six and a third runs as an average per game as we go on through the day, we're talking about the runs produced by Ruth and Gehrig, and yeah, it's going to be interesting to see all the clips about Lou Gehrig. There's the pitcher for the Yankees today, Don Schultze at Columbus, seven and four with a very respectable 2.14 earned run average in 14 games. The lineup for the Detroit Tigers. Came into town last night, late last night, I might add, from Baltimore. Scott Lucader leads off in center field. Tracy Jones in left field. Lou Whitaker hits third at second base. Keith Moreland, the cleanup hitter, playing third base. Freddie Lynn, the DH. Chet Lemon hits in the sixth spot. He is playing right field today. Dave Bergman at first. Mike Heath, the catcher, and Mike Brumley at short. Lucader, Jones, Whitaker, Moreland, Lynn, Lemon, Bergman, Heath, and Brumley will provide the opposition for Don Schultz today. All right, Scott Luceda steps in to uh, face Don Schultz. And as Tom told you, he called up emergency from Columbus. And here's his chance. He pitches a pretty good ball game today. He could stick around, Luceda who hurt the Yankees in the, the three-game series out in the Tiger Town. But luckily, Trammell is not in the lineup today. I'll tell you that. Alan Trammell has hurt the Yankees through the years so much, especially in that last series. And there's a strike by Schultz. 
Lucetta hitting 256. No homers. And strike two. He hit the outside corner. Remember, Scooter, we were in Detroit, and this young Lucetta was up. He swung at every pitch. That's First right. four pitches the Yankees threw, he swung it. Didn't make yes, it. It was high, did. low in the dirt. <laughs> and he struck him out. Well, an auspicious debut for uh, Don Schulte. And that's got to really make him feel good. High heat, and Lucetta just could not catch up to it. I don't know too much about Don Schulte. See Good fastball. Nothing really fancy. Uh -huh. Little slider. Fastball seems to be his best pitch. You can see they went with it right there with two strikes. There's the breaking ball. All right. Tracy Jones, who had an outstanding series against the Yankees in Detroit, batting 345, two homers, seven RBI. And that just missed another breaking ball. They remember him. The damage he did out in Detroit. So they're trying not to throw him that fastball, but he's behind now, 2-0. Oh. Uh, high foul. Uh, it's going out of play. Jones going after the 2-0 -oh pitch. Cripple situation. It's odd you had swing at a fastball, and he had not seen the fastball yet either. Mm-hmm. A little low, three and one. And Dallas Green. Yankees lost two in a row after reaching the 500 mark. With their pitching stuff being decimated the way it is. And another one. He goes after high and away, fouled it off. And the upper deck, full count. It's good you look back and you talk about the pitching staff. There's Billy Connors, the pitching coach for the Yanks. You know, when the Yanks came out of Florida, their rotation was Candelaria, Hawkins, LaPointe, Leiter, and Tommy John. They were going to be the five starters. And he popped him up. A breaking pitch on three and two, and Mattingly makes the catch. And two men are out. He showed us something else, so the breaking ball on three and two. But you're right, Tom. I mean, it was unbelievable. They were all set. They had a staff. It was a little old in the tooth, so to speak, but they thought it would do the job. And who's left? The only one that's left is Andy Hawkins. Yeah. LaPointe has been on the disabled list. Leiter is gone. Tommy John is gone. Candy, of course, is yeah. on the disabled list. And now the rotation seems to be Hawkins, Clay Parker, Island, Jones slash McCullers, uh -huh. Schultze. So it is a, it's been a pitching staff that Dallas and Billy Connors have just not been able to settle yet. No, and Nevada, that's a long. We're almost halfway through the season here. Sure, they've had a lot of sleepless nights. There's a bunt, and it's going to be a base hit. Boy, I tell you, for some reason, Brooklyn's moved back on the pitch, and Schulte did not break off the mound. It was a surprise bunt with two out, but Whitaker's been hitting a lot of home runs. Drops one down for a base hit. I don't think this is a real good play myself, Scooter. Two outs, your number three hitter. You know, if there's one out in the inning, no odds leading off, get on base. But that's your number three hitter, especially here at Yankee Stadium. Yeah, true. With two odds, swing the bat. This is especially as the number three hitter. You got to let it go. You got it. This is actually an easier park to hit home runs than Tiger Town, where he hits a lot of them. But maybe he's been a little bit of a slump there. Sparky in the background there, behind the bat boy. And Keith Moreland takes a ball. Ball game just underway. On the 4th of July, happy birthday to uh, our boss, George Steinbrenner. It, he's, a, he's a firecracker for sure. Got a temper to go with the uh, day. George Steinbrenner. And this young whippersnapper on my right, Dave. Reminds me that it's also George M. Cohan's birthday. That's right. Yankee Doodle Dandy. Born on the 4th of July. I'm sure there are a lot of other people born on the 4th of July, but those two come to mind right now. Two or nothing to Moreland. He's batting 316. That looks like a pretty good slider he's got, Tom, or whatever it is. It's breaking real late. 
Well, they're not catching up to it. Mm -hmm. Yankees. And excuse me, the Tiger hitters behind everything that Schultz has thrown so far. Schultz has got himself a real hot, humid day. The pitching. Two men out. He's checking Whitaker over at first. Nolan has 14 doubles, five homers, and 33 runs batted in. And Whitaker gets back easily. Whitaker has stolen three bases and been caught twice. Slider way outside, three and one. the deck and as Sam said when you see a lot of foul balls being hit up in the upper deck to the right and the left they are not catching up to his fastball yeah, and every time that they've done it too good they've been ahead in the count I'm yeah. talking about the hitters Schultz has got behind Jones Whitaker bunted on the first pitch and then got behind Moreland able to swing in a three and one Jones had a 2 0 and three and one count to swing on he ended up popping up yeah. at first all right, he curved Jones. Let's see what he does here. And nope, he threw the fastball and he lines it to left for a base hit. Whitaker moving has to stop at second. Polonia up with it. So the old two out bugaboo at uh, Schultz. He's got to get out of in this inning with two out. Get the first two. Next two base hits. And now Fred Lynn. Oh, we're well, talking about Whitaker with two outs bunning. You know, there's a guy that can hit extra bases, hit the ball for extra bases. Yeah. Not really a stolen base threat anymore. Well, you mentioned had he gone, got a double or something. He'd have been in yeah, now. That's right. Be one to nothing. That's yep. right. All right, here's Fred Lynn, who is always dangerous, but Lions want a right field, and he caught it on one hop. Uh, they're going to send him in. He's a dead duck. Oh! But that was unbelievable. I can't believe it. Anyway, nothing across, which is the best move. And at the end of one half inning, the tag is nothing, and the Yankees come in the back. Celebrate. Participating advertisers in New York Yankee baseball are Budweiser, Beachwood Age for that clean. Crisp taste, this bud's for you. GE, from satellites to medical systems, we bring good things to life. Canon, so advanced, it's the world leader in 35 millimeter photography. And Burger King, where we do it like you'd do it. And by the New York Yankees. That was some play, Scooter, that Barfield May Whitaker, who was on second base, Looks like he's limping a little bit, but I mean an absolute dead strike from <laughs> Barfield. No hops and a good play to get it on the short yeah, hop. That's right. And sets up. He didn't rush. He knew where the runner was. He knew exactly oh. if there was a strike to home plate. No chance, no chance. to get by Garen either. Oh, I And just it. kind of a courtesy slide by Whitaker. And but you're right. Whitaker was, was limping coming down that thing. I'm surprised they sent him. Alex Graham is the third base coach for... The Detroit Tigers playing aggressively down there and trying to get a run in the first inning. Had it been a play later in the game, he may not have sent him. For the Yankees, Steve Sachs, Polonia, Mattingly, Balboni, Barfield, and Brookins. Bobby Guerin, Espinosa, and Kelly, their lineup today as they face a crafty left-hander in Frank Tanana. He went from heat, best curve in baseball, to crafty, just as you mentioned. And that's a strike one and one. And now Saxe, who is going so great and all of a sudden is 0 for 12, has gone hitless in three straight games first time this year. But he's still batting 319. Go up, hit his bat. And he's going to be thrown out. 
Oh, man. Now, why does it always happen when you're in a slump? I don't remember him doing that all year. Here he's in a mild <laughs> slump. When you're hot, you're hot. When you're cold, you're cold. Yeah. You know, I mean, you got to remember all those little flares and little bloops that you hit that ball in for base hits. You know, <laughs> when you're going hot, you know where that ball's going to go? That'd but, be a swing and bunt uh, down the third base line. Base you hit. get a base hit. That's exactly right. See, the pitchers remember that. The hitters don't. Sure you do. They figure they got it coming. Yeah, but pitchers get away with mistakes, too. Yes, they I mean, do. They just, yeah. you know, Mattingly, you know, two days ago. Yeah. On Sunday, Mattingly hit two balls to right field. Yeah. Remember those two fly balls he hit to right field? Yes. And he just got under. Just got, yeah. And do you think the pitcher doesn't know they got away with two mistakes Absolutely. in that game? Absolutely. Oh. is right. Polonia takes a curve in the corner. It's 0-2. Two, two quick strikes. Louis has been having trouble with left-handed pitching in these uh, last two ball games. Of course, Higuera gives anybody trouble, especially the Yankees. That's outside. Which he heats set up out there. He sets up awful early out there. Does that make a pitcher mad when they do that, or you just throw for the glove anyway? So. I don't like catch. I never like catching to move anyway. But yeah. that's, you know. It's a different kind of that's one of the aspects of the game today that's a little bit different. Yeah. Oh man, that was self-defense there. I think that would have hit him if he didn't hit that ball. One ball, two strikes, one out. I told you Sachs was batting 319. Here's that last pitch. Could have hit him right on the left shoulder. And again, it did nick him. How do you like that? Just as we were saying, son of a gun. Metal telepathy. He, he sort of steps in and the left arm comes forward instead of falling back. So one way to help the team and not get hurt. It's a pretty good act. They seem to grab that arm. <laughs> Probably like a mosquito bite. Tanana doesn't throw hard, but he will throw inside yeah. to keep you honest. He has to throw inside to be able to be effective with his off speed step away. And home plate umpire Jim McGeehan right on top of it and said, yes, hit by the pitch, go to first base. All right, and here he is. He's at first. Bergman holding him on, and Don Mattingly now with the hitting streak. He's batting the strike one. That scoreboard <laughs> pretty confusing right now, but he's hitting 307, 11 homers, and 54 runs back in. Confusing because it says 307, then 306. Oh, the at-bats, I see. They've changed that. Look at it. They got the at-bats and hits now up there. And home runs and RBIs and stolen bases. Now that's something new, I think. I am not very observant. I have tunnel vision. Whoa! Oh, that's man. a balk. It was not only a balk, but they had poor Polonia that's leaning awful. towards second. Left handers get away with murder. I mean, that. he was stepping right toward Dallas yep. Green. And the Yankee <laughs> that picked up. Watch this. You watch his right foot. That's supposed to go someplace yeah, toward first. <laughs> oh, he picked him off. He did. Holy cow. You would think after that close a play that Louie would be a little more careful. So? Pat Corrales arguing down there and saying, listen, you got it. He's got to step this way. And Kenny guy, Kaiser having no part of it. But he's the guy that usually calls balks. Uh, and now Corrales is going to argue with uh, Kenny Kaiser. But Tom picked it up right away. I mean, he, and then when you saw the slow motion shot, <laughs> that would have frozen anybody over there. All right, two out, Mattingly. Line and a base hit. Oh, man, great play out there by Lemon. He almost got... A broken jaw, but he was loud. He got a little too close to it on the hop. Imagine if that was artificial surface. How many? 17 consecutive games for Matty. Boy, he just stays back so well. well that was a pretty good breaking. Not pitch, bad, but he just he keeps his hands back. He keeps his front side closed, and he has such a <laughs> quick bat. Again. Yeah, he's checking the ball. Make sure he didn't have the yeah, ball. That's right. <laughs> I like that. And the batter now is Balboni, who takes a strike. I tell you, poor Steve was overmatched against Aguera. Up four times, struck out all four times yesterday. But with Tanani, he's got a little better chance. He's hitting 245. Strike two. Oh, he took a little off. First a slow curve, then a chain. 
Steve is thinking, what is next? Bone, he's got 10 homers, 32 runs back then. Low, one ball, two strikes. I heard a um, stat on TV last night that Jim Abbott, who was a winning pitcher yesterday, has won seven ball games, and he's the first left-handed rookie pitcher to win seven ball games. I don't. I must have heard that stat wrong. Anyway. And off the end of the bat, didn't quite get it in left center. And it gives Lucetta time to catch up. If he got a little more wood, it would have been gone. But nothing across for the Yankees, and at the end of one, Tigers nothing, and the Yankees nothing. Subbed on your own. The men who have last been actively associated with Gehrig present something to show the high regard in which they hold him as a man and a player and a friend. Well, that was Sid Mercer, who was the master of ceremonies that day, and uh, great manager Joe McCarthy, along with Lou Gehrig in that picture at the microphone here at home plate at Yankee Stadium on that day 50 years ago. Swing and a miss by Chet Lemon. Lemon hitting 241. And Schultz, he moves him back. He's moving that ball around. Even though they got three singles off him after two are out in the first inning. That's a great throw by Barfield. Cut the run down. And that's fouled out of play. And of course, the Yankees a lot of baseballs today. One ball, two strikes. Next time you see a shot of Joe McCarthy when we flash some of these great films, notice the length of his uniform shirt. Long sleeves, always water. Oh, two and two. Joe McCarthy was my first manager in the big leagues. He had long sleeves in? Yep. The uniform sleeves, you're not you're talking about. Yes, right? the not the underneath, not, not no, the no, underneath no. shirt. No, 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 just the uniform thing, right? Foul back, it's two and two. They all used to be that way, too, Scooter, didn't they? Yeah, but when did that change? We, I don't know, but we had them just below the elbow, which was still bent. You know, when you bent your arm, you mm -hmm. could still feel it in there, but and they were all wool, 100% wool. Struck them out. Oh, man, he's got a wicked slider today. And I hope he uses it a little more. He's using it in the right spot so far. One out. Good breaking ball on the outside part of the plate. Lemon, the thing that makes that effective against him is that he came back inside earlier in That's the count, remember? Right, absolutely. I don't want to go sticking that nose out over the plate That's after right. you know that a pitcher will come back inside on you. All right, here's Bergman. Dave hitting 257. Takes a strike. Got two homers and 14 runs batted in. Way back he broke in the Yankee farm system. And hit down the left field line. That's trouble. That is trouble. But it's a foul ball. A break for the Yankees. You see a little bit of foul territory down there. Bologna are not used to that little bit of space. Gotta slow up or you'll run into that wall. Look at that glove. <laughs> I marvel at it every time I see it. <laughs> I mean, his thing, you see where the finger is. He's got three quarters of the glove still left. But he catches a lot of balls he doesn't even feel. There is no way an infielder could use that glove, oh, is there? No. <laughs> no. You'd never get the ball out to throw the runner out or make a double play. You never feel it. Yeah, right. Part of it's feeling the ground ball, yeah, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely. One ball, two strikes to count. One out, no score. Top of the second. Did he go? Yes, he did. He's out of there. Oh, oh. And Bergman can't believe it, but he did start, and he turned his body too late. He threw a slider to a left-hand batter, Steven. Look at a fastball up and in to me, Scooter. Yeah, fastball. Yep, yeah, he right. started okay. to swing. He's 
He's guessing out over the plate, and he did swing and then turned his body. You're exactly right. But then it was a fastball. Oh, so, two out, two strikeouts. That's the third of the ball game. Getting the first two hitters here, and here is Heath. Heath batting 285, and he takes a breaking ball over strike one. At six homers, 19 runs batted in. Just inside. Right now, let's pause 10 seconds along the Yankee Baseball Network for station identification. Foul back. The bat was let go by Heath. Man, now these fans, they're getting hungry now. They see three strikeouts already for sure, so they want another one. Ooh. Ooh little sinker there. Two balls, two strikes. Holy cow! He did not swing, but I thought that ball nicked the corner. I don't know how he held up anyway. Three and two. Breaking ball off the outside part of the plate again. And mm. good job, I hate to hold off. It was. And bounce foul. There are the long sleeves. You can't even see the end of them. McCarthy's got his arms. Well, you can see the one on Garrick over there yes. on the left. Scooter, see down. That's the his, one you were talking about a, yeah, down that's below. The one we wore, the, below the elbow, yeah, but below he the elbow. down to the wrist. There's McCarthy. You yep. see his long sleeve to the right. And foul back into the seats out of play. You know, we're talking about the glo gloves, and you played short. Did you cut the leather out of the middle of your glove? No, but I've heard all the old story. timers yeah. did. They did, and, and it was true, huh? I tried it a couple, and it was great. The only time it might have hurt if you got a line drive and hit right in there. But these old timers had calluses all over them. I saw a lot of them, uh, Red Ralph guys like that, that had to be sent a cutout because those gloves in those days were just about as big as your hand. They called a motorman's glove, and it was all padding and leather. First, you had to take a lot of the padding out, and if you didn't. You couldn't catch the ball. It would hit and pop out. So yeah. as a result, they would cut the center out. And then when the ball hit, it would be on the palm of your hand. You'd be able to catch the ball and it would hold. And I'll tell you, I was never quite strong enough to do that on a regular basis. All right, he hits one and making a nice running backhand catch, Kelly. I didn't think he was going to get to that, Stephen. Looked like he coasted it, knew he had it all the way. Yeah, he right. coasted after it, knew he had it. All right, three up, three down at the end of an inning and a half. Tigers nothing and the Yankees nothing. There are the offensive achievements, 23 career grand slams, which is a major league record. The triple crown winner in 1934. Look at that average, 363, 49 homers, 165. But the American League MVP in 27 and 36. I thought he had three. Uh, there were three, Scooter, there were. but now those are two by the Baseball Writers Association. He also won another one before the baseball writers began oh, to give okay. that award. So Thanks for clearing Luke that up. Eric, uh, three MVPs, but... Only two given by the Baseball Writers Association of America as it when, when it started. All right, Barfield has the count of two balls, no strikes on him. I missed that last stat down there, and it was a very impressive one. I don't know whether it was 493 home runs, and uh, let's see what was the other one? Pretty good numbers, though, aren't they? Oh man, unbelievable! Changes high, three and zero. Oh. There it is. His career average, 340. Isn't that unbelievable? I mean, that, I mean, that man. 493 career homers, but that one year we're going to talk about that later on. Strike one, three and one. Caulfield hitting 228, 11 homers, 33 runs batted in. And leading 
the American League and assists with 14. Ooh, what a cut. Foul back. <laughs> Knocks his glove right off. <laughs> Almost knocked him over backwards, too. <laughs> Keep your nose right in it as a catcher. Don't be turning your head, and that's the reason Ooh. why right there. Man. Actually, the glove came off when and Barfield's bat came around. It did, and then it bounced up and hit him off the mask. So. Full count, no score, nobody out. And rip to deep center field, and Lucida runs and makes the catch. Boy, that kid got an excellent jump on that ball because it was not high. And one man out. You look at Lucida in center field, it reminds you of Freddie Lynn taking off a young Freddie yes, Lynn, doesn't young, he? Young, exactly young Freddie. We had one other fly ball, Balboni flew out in the, for the last out in the first inning, and I saw this young kid take off, and I said, gee, I thought Freddie Lynn was the DH yeah. today. And I said, yeah, Lucida, he has the same kind of actions, physical action center field as Freddie had when he was a young player. All right, Tom Brookins takes a pitch outside. Tom batting 240. He's getting that average up, three homers. And 10 runs batted in. One man out. Right one on one. I like that new scoreboard. I don't know how long it's been. Mike. Somebody's got to tell me. This. Curve ripped to a right field. Uh, Lemon going over and makes the catch. Santana does throw mostly fly ball outs. Number 53. Because he's got the Bob hitters off stride a lot. Number Here's Bob Guerin. Guerin hitting 395. Three homers, six runs got it in. He came out as a pinch hitter yesterday and got a base hit. Great pitch. <laughs> that is a great pitch. We had a couple of guys through that. Steve Hamilton. Great pitch. From the left hander to the right hander. Look, yeah, see where Garen is. Garen has already committed. Boy. You see that? Whether it's a strike or not on the first pitch, it just you don't even have to get a strike. Oh, what a play by Moreland. Holy cow. So on the General Electric scoreboard now at the end of two, it's the Tigers nothing and the Yankees nothing. And we now pause for station identification. You are the man with them, the largest and for generations generation to come. While sports in the way of America, they will join the record with pride and satisfaction. I congratulate you. Well, that was the Postmaster General, James Farley, who is a frequent, frequent visitor here at the Yankee Stadium. And he was helping to honor Lou Gehrig. And you could tell whenever summer began and summer ended because Mr. Farley would come with his straw hat and sit right in the first row down there alongside the Yankee dugout, put the hat on the first day of summer, last day of summer, he'd take it off. Usually gave it to somebody. Great memories, I tell you. Here's Mike Brumley. He drags a butt. No, it didn't. Oh, I don't know why Schultz he decided to try and tag him. He made a great play, got a good break, Tom, on the hop coming up, but then he had to flip it from the glove. I know he didn't have time to put it in his bare hand, but he's no speed demon. We can see that. Well, he definitely had a play. If he gets the ball to Mattingly, Don was right at the yeah. bag, right where he should have been. Schultz, he falls off to the left side there, to his left. You can see Mattingly right at the bag, yeah. but Brumley runs very well. Good speed. He just got to take it out and backhand it right to Don. It had been an easy out for him. He got a good play getting off that mound of the left, and you're right, the ball kind of kicked up for him yeah. at the very last. I think Garen just giving him a breather there. Looked like uh, Schultze uh, got a little out of breath with that quick run. I was also telling him that this Brumley will run, too. Uh -huh. He's got some speed. He's stolen three out of four for All right. the Tigers.
Crusader struck out his first time up. Well, Schultz keeping an eye on Brumley. And incidentally, the Postmaster General, James Farley, was from Havistraw, New York. A very popular town, just a little north of Yankee Stadium. Ball one. You know, you're talking about a straw hat scooter. One of the yeah. great things about those old film clips and stuff. Yeah. The old ball games. Every all the gentlemen wore hats. Hats. They all wore hats. All wore hats. And ties and, and coat ties. ties. That's and right. A celluloid collar like Connie Mack used to wear in ties. They. A lot of golfers even wore ties. If you remember. Oh sure. Time is sure. My father was a Walker Cup golfer. I know. Yeah. Back in the 32s. And I have pictures of him in knickers. No kid. And a shirt and tie playing yes, golf. That's sure. Right. Oh yeah. Oh, we're going to have to talk about that one day when the Yankees get on a winning streak. Right now we got to talk baseball and Lou Gehrig today. And no better man to talk about when you're talking about Yankee tradition and heroes. What a man. He led by his bat and glove and legs. Popped him up, shallow left, Polonia. And Polonia makes the catch, one man out. He makes the catch, and if he can ever find the ball <laughs> inside that glove, he's going to get it back to the infield, too, isn't he? Right. <laughs> This glove in left field is bigger than Mattingly's glove. Look at the size of that glove. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's you like a use, telescope. You can it? use that in the winter when you go out and pick your peaches, you know? <laughs> That's right. You wouldn't need a bushel basket. That was the old term. Look at Mattingly's glove, half the size of Polonia. Breaking ball a little high to Tracy Jones. Ball one. Jones popped to Mattingly first time up. No score on the top of the third. Very overcast day today. Fourth of July. Don't forget, you folks out at the beach, if you get a little disappointed with no sun, come out to the stadium. Have plenty of time to see the end of this game and the Beach Boys in concert. And we'll be stomping along with them and singing those old tunes. Run is going and a foul back. That would have been the perfect hit and run. Sachs was already over second on the shortstop side of the bag, and he could have got a ship between first and second if he hit it on the ground. One of the reasons that catchers wear the helmets now, which is mandatory, Ooh. there's a good picture wire right there. That bat coming around. That's the second one we've seen today. Mm -hmm. Jones here in Barfield knocked. Heath's glove off earlier in the game. All right, one and one. And hits a right field. It's going to be a tough play for Barfield. He, he makes the catch. Holy cow! And almost gets him at front. Oh, man, this guy. Oh, I'm sure Dave Winfield, if he's watching, would be proud of the way Barfield is playing his territory out there. I didn't think he had a chance to get that, Seaver. Well, he just simply outran the ball, Scooter. Incredible. Jones hit the ball hard to right field. Barfield, who has struggled oh, with the bat man. all year long. But it has not let it affect his defense. Two superb defensive plays by Barfield in the game already. And we're just in the top of the third inning. Oh, I think Schultz is going to take him out to dinner after this game. He keeps it up. Two men are out. No score, top of the third. Very much aware, Mr. Brumley trying to steal. Whitaker beat out that bunt. And then was thrown out trying to score from second. On a base hit by Freddie Lynn. Still right one. when the bench has got to be alert and uh, somebody yell if the runner is going a lot of times the catcher is blocked out with the left hand batter up and you can't quite see that want to take that first couple of steps 
has the bench. There are a lot of guys that can yell over there. Burnley doesn't go, and it's high. One on one. Look at that. That is the old way. That's the way Gehrig and Ruth and all of them wore their socks. Who is that? It's going to be Pags, isn't it? Pags. Now he's got the low cuts. Oh, man. That's high. Two and one. That is really low. But that's the way they made those socks in those days. We had them back in 41, 42. And you couldn't pull them up. They didn't have the stretch that they oh, had. Oh, they're now. heavy. Made heavy wool. Yeah, everything oh, was made everything of wool. Everything was wool. Yeah, they'd last forever. Those wool uniforms are great. I love them. It, I really did, loved them. Did you? We did this when they now they they modified them and made them not as thick. I'm not oh, talking about the real I old yeah, the way heavy way. ones. But they made some real nice flannel ones. Now there's, Beautiful. there's the new there's style. A, uh, the new socks, yeah. High stirrups, they're yep. called. Three and one. Those wool uniforms just to breathe. Very nicely. They used to, yeah, and the, the new ones, which are the polyester. They don't. No, they don't really. breathe at all. I mean, uh -huh. they really get hot, especially on never, never wore artificial them. surface and stuff. They really get hot. Ball four. Trying to be a little careful and worrying a lot about Brumley. He loses Whitaker. First walk given up by Schultze. And that'll bring up Keith Morland, who uh, single a left field his first time up. He's going to get that breaking ball over to Morland with two out. Dallas Green, a little edgy. Breaking pitch, strike one. Well, I tell you, he can throw that. He can throw that till he gets real tired, and then he put somebody else in. There. Well, he's shown that he'll pop the fastball, so you would think most of the hitters going to go up looking but, for the fastball. Uh -huh. Sure, at least on the first pitch, or up to one strike. He wheels, does not throw. Espinosa almost got spiked that time. And watch those feet on the bag. Ooh, right up and in. Great spot. There's a pitch that looks like it's going to be good to hit, but see where it ends up? Mm -hmm. You know, off the plate. Good riding fastball up and in. Right at that left elbow. All right, this is a big strikeout. Big man to strike out. So here and move out there so fast. Way out there, yeah, wasn't it? It's too far. Boy, in the old days, they'd have gotten you that message from the first oh, base man. coaching box, oh, wouldn't they? They'd whistle. Oh. <laughs> it just isn't done anymore. No, no. Five, one ball, two strikes. And he tried that up and in pitch again, but a little too high up and a little too much in. And it's two and two. You saw how far I went outside on the last pitch. The yeah. catcher talking about Bobby Guerin. If you're the hitter, and you either fudge it all, and then on that pitch there, the last one, where he didn't go way outside, where do you think he's going? He's going inside. I'm saying, where was that pitch? You think that's an advantage for the hitter? Yes, of definitely. Of course it is. Huge advantage yep, for the hitter. It definitely is. That pitch was out of the strike zone, but again, with two strikes on you, you're swinging pitches. That you might not swing at with less than two strikes on it. All right, at second base you have Mike Brumley, and at first base Lou Whitaker with two men out, no score. We're in the top of the third, two ball, two strike count on Morland. Oh, he was lucky to get a piece of that. Oh, that was a good pitch. Boy, that was, and he just barely got a piece. Of it. That went right in the corner of the Yankee dugout. It hit somebody the way they're looking down there. Look at that. That was self-defense there. He Just was staying alive. You're mm -hmm. right, Scooter. Just staying alive. 
All right, it's two and two. Hershey working hard. Yep. Can't get him to nibble that far outside. Three and two now, a break for the Tigers in the sense that the runners will be going on three and two and two out. for Schulte in this ball game. The other run is leading away. They go, and he bounces it foul. Have to do it again. He's Moreland now batting 319. something. This Moreland is a tough man to strike out. He has only struck out 21 times this year. And I think a uh, hard swinger. And he just reaches out and hits one in the air. Who's got it? Okay, Barfield. He looked like Kelly was waiting and Barfield came out of nowhere and made the catch. Boy, he is all over the field. Nothing across at the end of two and a half. Tigers nothing and the Yankees nothing. How about those stats, Eva? Eric's RBI total, just incredible. It is. You know, it's amazing, 140 plus RBIs. In eight in seasons. Eight seasons. Yeah, I look at those numbers and thinking about facing those three and four hitters for the Yankees. Oh, man. Ruth and Gehrig, and then he said, what do you do if you had to pitch against them? <laughs> that murderer's row lineup they had in 27. Unbelievable. Here's Espinosa batting 272. No homers, 18 runs batted in. And Alvaro takes a strike. But what's amazing, every time Gehrig hit the ball, it was a bullet. It was a line drive or a long home run. And the speed. He got the record for a stealing home the most times. And lined a base hit to right center. Boy, Espinosa, I'd say that he is really swinging the bat wherever the ball is pitched. Not. He's become a big favorite here, and well, he should. That's the second Yankee hit. They make a mistake up in the hitting zone. Espy hits the ball hard. You can see that pitch just about letter high, and yep. that's right where he likes it. All right, that'll bring up Roberto Kelly. And Kelly had three base hits yesterday. Roberto had two. I mean, Roberto had three, and Alvaro had two. And a bunt. It's a dandy. They'll never get him, and it's going to stay fair. Oh, no, that son of a... We've got to get the ground crew to... Cut that edge a little smaller. I can't believe that was a perfect bunt. The last bounce that hit the edge. I'll tell you, with such a slow curve that Kelly almost ran into it at first. And then he's able to double hitch on a bunt if he can do such a thing. Watch him lean. Kelly was very disappointed when he got it down to first base. He knew he'd made a perfect bunt. Couldn't believe that the ball hooked foul at the very last. There's no way that it gotten him at first, even if Tanan had been able to feel the ball. Right. It oh. just hit on the edge of that grass, the cut, and kick right the only play they had was to hope that it would go foul. Good yep. play by Kelly trying to get on with it. nobody out here. Inside, one on one. It's not what you do, Scooter, on the field, it's when you do it, too. That's, right. that's, that's a big part of it. Big, big part. Of it. And the thing, what I liked about Kelly doing it was if you guess right with a pitcher like Tanana with that big slow curve, it's a perfect ball of bunt. You can get a head start going towards first. Inside again, two and one, and it's thrown so softly that you can deaden the ball with your bunt. Put yourself the base hit at the worst, you move the runner up. Oh, 
4 and 0 for the Tigers, 0 2 and 0 for the Yankees. And four, but it could. Let's see, no, Lemon's going to get there. Hit it off the end of the bat, but it carried one man out. Good pitch by Tanana. Yeah. I mean, he's so big, and he's got that big kick, and the arm back is way out in front. Well, the important thing here is the two previous pitches were fastballs inside, and then comes the little changeup away yeah. for the strike. The two fastballs were for balls. Here's the changeup in the hitting zone. Well, see, you receiver appreciates that, knowing how a That's pitcher just good works pitching. on. It is. That's why I say you, you, how you work on a batter. Batter doesn't appreciate it, though. Now look. <laughs> Pat Corrales looking over at Kenny Kaiser. Going. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Let's have some semblance of toward first base. That's all he wants. That's all Corrales would like over there. Oh, man. If that's not a boy, I swear. He'll pick anybody off with that move. Sachs tries to bunt and fouls it off. He got a fastball to bunt. You can see the difference when he tried to bunt a fastball. Sachs trying to bunt it out there between Whitaker and Bergman and, and the pitcher, Tanana. Trying to get it into no man's land. Dallas has moved from that spot, or is he looking at Tanana? He's, he's getting ready maybe to have an argument with the umpire. He's getting closer to that balk move. Well, he wants to see it, definitely. Yeah. That's why he's down there. One strike, one out. Well, that was all right there. He can try to be tricky on that one. Hey. You can bet. The Dallas would be out of that dugout if, in fact, he feels that there's a bar committed. This one is really going to have a one-way lead down at first base. This will give you another view of it. Now that step, that foot is supposed to go somewhat toward first base. Nope. Sachs really not hitting the ball solidly like we know he can. Lemon comes over and makes the catch. Two men are out. The reason why that last throw to first base by Tanana was effective and one of the things that left hands will try to do as soon as they throw it they'll just continue walking right toward first base as if you know it's just part yeah. of an extension of walking over there. I think Poloni's going to get mad. Eddie Layton keeps playing Louise when he comes up here. I know it's like Luis but and again another bunt attempt. Not too bad. You get that third baseman moving in and Tanana kind of leery of the bunt. I throw him off. Espinosa <laughs> definitely not a threat to steal. But he sure got Tanana worried. Knows has one stolen base, got caught twice. So far, Dallas has not objected to any of those moves. It's because Espinosa has not been called out yet. <laughs> <laughs> Eat no sunflower seeds. Whoop. One step off, and he almost got him. One of the things that a runner could do here was get out there so far and really take that one-way lead and make him throw over there. Uh -huh. that's, uh, that's about as far as they're going to let him go. All right, two balls, no strikes. The thing about it, if you let a pitcher do that, and he really has the right to do it the entire game exactly yeah. like it is. Sure, that's right. You can't change it. Kenny Kaiser can't change his mind, say, well, in the third or fourth or fifth inning, say, well, now, you know, well, now it's a ball. All right, you got to be consistent. As you said, they got to be on balls and strikes. And again, a bluff one. It's high three enough. 
Well, Polonia might get one of those rare walks that he gets. He's walked just 12 times in 241 at bats. He's cutting and slashing up there. Three and oh, two out, no score, bottom of the third. Down. He laid that down. I don't think that would have broken a pane of glass if they, if they were a pane of glass. He's not committed to balk this season. How do you like that? Foul back three and two. Now Espinosa's got to be careful. He cannot leave too soon. He's not trying to steal the base. Now he goes. And a base. Oh, no. I started to say base hits. And then I got his glove in the way and deflected it to second. Whitaker throws him out. Well, he's on the ball. Now on the Burger King scoreboard at the end of three. If the Tigers nothing and the Yankees nothing. For his long and faithful service, I sincerely hope that Lou who could be a good continue to be with the team for a long time to come. And the conclusion. What a day that was, George. Huh? Oh boy. And you know what was so remarkable about it? There were some planned speeches like that one, but so much of it was just spontaneous, and that's what made it such a very special day for Lou Gehrig for baseball for the Yankees and for the history of the national pastime really. Freddie Lynn Chet Lemon and Dave Bergman for the Tigers here in the top of the fourth inning no score at the stadium. This beautiful July 4th day overcast skies but not oppressively warm kind of a cool breeze the American flag blowing out above the facade in center field and the outfield. A little bit from left field to right field. Here's a discussion between Kenny Kaiser and Dallas Green talking about the move that Frank Tanana has toward first base and Kenny telling him why it is, in his opinion, not a balk. Hit hard to right field. Barfield way back, right at the wall. Lynn was way out in front of that. Ball that might have been a home run at Tiger Stadium in Detroit with the overhang. That ball was high enough, but here at Yankee Stadium, that was one of those balls from two years ago. They would have said it was a lively ball going to the track. He's off balance, hits it with one hand, and you get burned on a home run by that, and you're the pitcher. You feel sick, right? Well, that's a pair of strong. That's one strong forearm that a hitter has. That's for sure. Lifted to right field by Chet Lemon and. Two in a row. Jesse Barfield taking care of him nice and orderly in right field. The Tigers came in today at 31 and 48. A tough and long year for Sparky Anderson and his Detroit Tigers so far. Seventh in the American League East, 14 games behind. The Baltimore Orioles, they lost to the Orioles 11 to 4 last night. Dave Bergman with two outs and first pitch swinging. That should be in the seats down the left field side. They lost to the Orioles 11 to 4 last night in Baltimore, a night game. They left Baltimore Stadium around midnight last night. Got to their hotel about quarter of three. By the time they got their suitcases and ready for bed and get some sleep, it was about 3.30 and then a day game here at Yankee Stadium today. And the quirks and the schedules of Major League Baseball a night game out of town and a day game in the next town which uh, they'll be playing with the need of a little sleep two balls in a strike 
two outs here in the top of the fourth. Don Schulze pitching very well for the Yanks. Just recalled from Columbus. Evens the count at two and two. The Yankees have fallen to two games under 500. They got back to that 500 mark at 39 and 39, but they've lost a couple. And now two under. Off speed, Bergman goes the other way. And Brooken throws him out. So, good job by Schultz. A couple of fly balls and a ground out. The Tigers go one, two, three, and after three and a half innings, no score at Yankee Stadium. Hundred and sixty two career triples for Lou Gehrig incredible a man of his size and stockiness you could see how big his legs were running out that three base hit but he could run extremely well and had the great power hitter as well and joining us in the booth here one of the legends I won't tell you who it is all you're gonna have to do is hear his voice. A living legend. <laughs> a living legend. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. It's nice to be up here with all you legends. Well, it's such a great day of memories that you recall the great Lou Gehrig. Yeah, that was my rookie year. And in fact, it was the first year that they broadcast on a daily basis in New York. It's amazing how much you can learn <laughs> like that. Pretty good hitter. Matting lead to right field, his second base hit of the day, two for two, leads off the fourth for the Yanks here with a single. Yankees' third hit of the day, Matting Lee has two of them. Not a bad first baseman either, is he? One of the best I've ever seen. You know, George and Tom, as you all both do, you go around the league and you talk to Guys like, let's say, a Rigney, uh, uh, guys that have played back a few years. When he first came up, and they were ecstatic about him, and rightly so. He's lived up to that billing, no question. Mattingly, not a threat to run at first base. But we'll see if, in fact, Tanana continues to throw over there. We saw the little clip at the end of the last inning. Kenny Kaiser coming over and talking to Dallas Green about the move. That Tanana has. Balboni hard down the left field line, but that'll be in the seats. I think one of the greatest thrills I ever had when Mattingly won the batting championship. The last day of the year, he and Winfield. And Winfield was ahead of him. And Mattingly had about four hits that day. And, you know, they followed one another in the order, and this crowd went wild, you know. Of course, you were here for Lou Gehrig Day. Yes, uh, I, I was up in that booth, and like everybody else, the thousands that were here, I cried too. It was a very memorable moment. And I say moment in, the, in its general sense. Quite obviously, you knew here was this great ball player, and, and uh, he had this illness, and it was terminal, and he, he really was saying goodbye. And, uh, and when he said he was the luckiest guy in the world, all that, he couldn't help but shed tears. Balboni on an 0-2 pitch should be two for the Tigers. And it is. Kenny Kaiser rings it up. Tigers turn their 69th double play on the infield. And after a Mattingly single, very quickly, two outs. The one great thing here, Moreland knows, and so does Whitaker at second, that they've got Balboni running. If it had been anybody but Balboni, they could have avoided the two, but it gave them chance to get things together and turn the two. Marfield's been having a great day, hasn't he? Not bad. Throw some leather at you, doesn't That's he? That's what know? I mean. <laughs> You've seen some great ones out in right field, and of course, Winfield was one of the best, but Jesse ranks right up there. George, somebody downstairs in the press room, our way up, 
happened to be talking about it, uh, that very thing. But going back a few years, I was said, well, uh, the guy that threw the hardest was uh, Colombino, but he was scatter art. But the fellow with the reputation, the most accurate, was Hank Bauer. Um, Tom, uh, it's interesting to me, why are they running on uh, Barfield? As you know, when they know a guy can throw, in the game, they quit running on him. Early on the game, uh, first inning, they're trying to get on the scoreboard, obviously in the first inning. Barfield hard on the left field line. That'll end up in the corner. Tracy Jones going to play it off a wall, and Jesse's going to have a two-out double here in the bottom of the fourth for the Yanks, the man in scoring position. Six years ago, I had another thrill. The, July 4th, and Dave Rigetti pitched a no-hitter against the Red Sox, and the last man he got out was Wade Boggs. And Wade Boggs still hasn't forgotten that moment. Neither is Dave Rigetti. <laughs> 1983. <laughs> he was leading the league in total hits. I remember 63, but I've forgotten what his average was. It was, had to be up there, though. To bring up Tommy Brookins with Jesse Barfield in scoring position. Yankees with their fourth hit in the ball game. No score. Frank Tanana and Don Chelsea throwing zeros on the scoreboard so far. Visiting with Mel Allen in the broadcast booth here on this July 4th day in memory of a day 50 years ago and Lou Gehrig said goodbye at the stadium. Scooter has left us for an inning, but George, we uh, we get Mel all to ourselves. When you say the voice of the Yankees, there is only one, yep. and that's the man sitting next to us. I want to. I wish he were here. I, I'd say, you know, at, while that was my rookie year, we were talking about some of our prospects coming up, and you were one of them. They said right field. Chet Lemon trying to nail down Barfield and never get him, and Tommy Brookins going to end up at second base. The Yankees on the scoreboard lead it one to nothing. A good two out rally for New York. On the double by Barfield and the little group single to right by Tommy Brookins scores Barfield and the Yankees jump on the board. Brookins, you'll know, loves every moment of this because he's a former Detroit Tiger. They gave him a standing ovation when he went back to Detroit. And here he has the chance to come through. He gives the Yankees the lead with the base hit to right field. And there's the difference between one right fielder and another. You see Barfield getting off second, and with two outs, he knows that all you got to do is put it in high gear. Let it go, George. I think there's a difference. We had a play in Baltimore where Jesse Barfield, on a ball that was hit the other way, hesitated because he didn't know where the fielders were playing. That time, with two out, he's off to the races. He scores there. The one in Baltimore could have been a critical play. Obviously, the Yankees lost by one run in that game. Bobby Guerin pops it up to left field. Good swing, but just hit the bottom half of the ball. But the Yankees on a couple of hits come up for the first run of the ball game. They leave one after four innings of play here at Yankee Stadium, New York one, Detroit nothing. When you came to my room in Detroit some time ago, told me that you thought that you were chances of the ball club by staying in the ball game. That was a day that I never wanted to see. There was Joe McCarthy, his moment in the story that unfolded on July 4th, 1939. Lou Gehrig Day here at Yankee Stadium 50 years later. Our guest up in the booth is the great Mel Allen. And Mel, you knew Lou personally. I got to know Lou. I'd like to have known him better. Uh, that was the first year of broadcasting in New York, all three teams at that time, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, but Lou, very early that year, it was on May 2nd, he actually took himself out of the lineup after talking to McCarthy. But he remained, you know, for the rest of the year after going to Mayo Brothers and learned that he had amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. So, Broken bat. Heath Espinosa, one out for Detroit here on the top of the fifth. Yankees lead it one to nothing. 
I was sitting on the bench, Tom, one day. And you, you got, you got to, I hope you appreciate this. Every once in a while, Lou would come out. He was working for Mayor LaGuardia in 1940. And the word came down, somebody chauffeured him up, Lou's here. And after this pitch, you could hear him coming down the runway. In those days, the Yankees dug out of the back of third, had a common runway, and the two clubhouses were back of third base. And when he made his, you could hear him shuffle. His, you know, it's a progressive paralysis type of thing. But they greeted him, hey, Cap, you know, it made him feel really great. But they had to all go out for infield practice. And McCarthy, he said, I'll see you later, Lou. And he, he ran in ran into the clubhouse. And all of a sudden, I'm left alone with him. And he looked over at me, and he patted me on the thigh. And he said, well, I never got to listen to your ball games that I was playing. And he said, now, outside of my family and some personal things, those ball games are the only thing keep me alive. And I, I said, gee, I got to go upstairs. And I ran down the wrong way and ball like a baby. That, you, you couldn't help it. Wow. I'd have done that for Seaver wow. when he won his 300th game. Wow. Mike Brumley hit the ball hard down to Don Mattingly. A good play by the Golden Glover. And Schultz hit the bag right on time. There are two outs for Detroit here. Heath grounded out to lead off the inning. And now a 3 to 1 if you're scoring for Mike Brumley. And that turns the lineup over. We go back to the top. And Scott Lucader, the center fielder for the Tigers, struck out leading off the game. And a fly out victim in the third inning. A very free swinger. Crusader came in hitting 256. 0 for 2 on the day. Yankees lead it here in the top of the fifth inning. They scored a run in the bottom of the fourth and lead it 1 to nothing. You know, Mel, people talk about Lou as being the great gentleman, but what a competitor. What a fiery competitor. People don't realize he was thrown out of six games for arguing with umpires. He had a temper, didn't he? He did. But and that's what made him, you know, uh, such a great competitor, so aggressive. And yet he always played on, in, in the shadow of somebody. Uh, you fellas know these stories, and a lot of fans listening in do too. But he had four consecutive homers in the headline the next day. John McGraw resigns as manager of the Giants. Uh, he also lost a home run championship uh, because Len Larry was on at first base, two outs. He takes off and Lou hits his high liner. It, it went into the right field seats, but it hit the seats, hit the back, spun up in the air, and as Larry looked over his shoulder, uh, going towards third, he saw the outfielder catching the ball, which had ricocheted out on the field. So he kept on running across third base in the dugout. Lou was giving it the home run shot. The trot didn't see it. The guy who was coaching at third was Joe McCarthy. And I, they say that's the last time he ever coached. Uh, I wasn't here, but the, but the one thing that I got a kick out of, you know, they talk about Ruth hitting that home run in the World Series, pointing that when he crossed home plate, he said to Lou, he said, you do the same thing, kid. And he did. But you don't hear about that. And that's the story of Lou Gehry. And his career, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. That's right. John Chelsea walks Scott Lusader. Two outs here in the... Top of the fifth inning, the second base on ball that Schultze has given up today. Schultze had retired six in a row. So the Tigers have a two-out base runner. Lucader, good speed and always a, a base-stealing threat. Tigers need a run to tie it up here as the Yanks lead it one to nothing. Tracy Jones on the first pitch and Espinosa just does get him. Well, thanks for spending some time with us. Thank you, gentlemen. Tigers a real pleasure. Tigers get a base runner, but the Yankees are leading it one to nothing. And as we take a break here after four and a half innings, you're taking a look at Wally Pipp, a man that Lou, Lou Gehrig replaced at first base. 